Howdy folks, and uh, welcome to a Greenside Project Let's Assemble. Uh, today I was planning um, to do a video about this guy. This is Curious Inquisitor Ian, who recently arrived from uh, direct from GW. Well, I say direct via their store where it was delivered to save me a bit of postage and to give me an excuse to go in there and have a look around. Um, but as you might be able to hear, and as I'll show you, the weather outside today is absolutely miserable. So although I've assembled Ian here, what I've not had a chance to do is undercoat him. Because uh, at the moment I've been undercoating with, you know, regular aerosol spray, which is a shame. Now you might be thinking to yourself, ah, but Greenside Project, we know you've got an air gun, why not undercoat with that? Well, yeah, that's a good idea too. Yesterday I dutifully went on to a... Uh, about I can say, can't I? I went on to Wade and Gaines. I uh, put together quite a big order of sort of a uh, airbrush type stuff that I need. Some Vallejo primer, some thinner, all that sort of thing. Some airbrush cleaner. Um, but unfortunately, they're waiting for a restock. So although I've ordered it, I've not got those. So I don't really have any particularly effective ways of undercoating Ian for now, which is a shame. Um, I do have some Imperial Primer, let's see if I can find that. But let's face it, as anyone that's ever tried using Imperial Primer will know, well you can see it's got some airbrushing on it, that's not exactly good for anything, or at least certainly this bottle isn't. Funnily enough, yesterday I was in Games Workshop talking to the manager, who is in our Games Workshop is a nice and quite sophisticated guy by Games Workshop standards, and he did say, as this primer was being so useless for me, that I could bring it back and try another pot, which is very, very kind of him actually. Um, because I've tried using this on minis and it is poor. So what we are going to do today instead is we're going to do a bit of a let's assemble. We are going to assemble these guys. Who you'll have seen um, a little bit before. These are a Talon Infantry Squad from GW, officially from their site. Um, they're still selling the metal ones, they're still worth getting, I still think. Despite the prices GW charge for most things, actually £25.50 for this uh, infantry squad, which includes a heavy weapon, and, you know, these metal models, is actually a surprisingly good deal. I don't think it's supposed to be sniffed at. They were £17.50 back in 1996, I remember it well, when I got my first squad of Mordians. £25, not too much markup since then compared to other GW products. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get the minis out, have a look around, see if I can see any horrible mould lines or anything. And if I can, I'm going to scrape them off. Mm, this guy looks pretty clear. I've got a little bit of one there. I mean, I w it is a bit bizarre at the moment. I'm so used to, uh, with metal minis, having metal minis that I've had to strip or someone else has had to strip. It's a bit weird seeing them shiny and new. I had the same thing with uh, Ian here. He was a new metal mini. And Ian, I've forgotten what it was like when you had a really thick metal mini. Because he was very top heavy for a while and kept sort of balancing over. That is one of the advantages of fine cast. It might not look anything like you want it to, it might be bubbled to death, but at least it's very, very light. So, I can see a teeny bit of a mould line just down here on our friend's leg. So I think what I'll do is I'll get a file, have a work on that. Now, while I was getting back in the hobby, I was quite lucky because my, well basically my father-in-law really, although I'm not married to my partner, you know, we might as well be, you know, we live together, we love each other, and other soppy things like that. He's a uh, model railway collector, and as such, he goes to lots of conventions, he takes his set there, which is very interesting and full of sorts of lights and moving bits that frighten us mini guys quite a lot. But when I was getting back into the hobby, he offered to go to one of these conventions and buy me sort of all the hardware that I really needed, things like these files, I've got a pack of these which I think actually he got from a, uh, a historical wargaming uh, shop. Things like that. My bone saw here. He got me all sorts of useful things and plastic card. And these different sized files are absolutely brilliant for all the odd shapes you get on infantry. I'll show you the pack briefly of all the different types of files I've got there. You can see all sorts of horrible looking curly files. It would also be fantastic if I ever needed props to play some sort of horrible mad dentist or perhaps a torturer or just some 
person who enjoyed uh, manufacturing minis. Now where's my flat file gone? I find personally with white metal if you try to use um, if you try to use a knife too much to scrape off things like mould lines short term it works okay but it does blunt your knife so I think yeah this guy's pretty much sorted so let's get a base out See if I can find some glue. Well, I know I'll be able to find some glue. It'd be a pretty rubbish video if I couldn't. But let's see first if we can get him to stand up straight. Yep, that's quite nice. Um, in the news recently, I see that, uh, or I rather, I've read that Games Workshop or Forge World are going to start changing the way they phrase things. At the moment, at the beginning of every Forge World book, it says something along the lines of. Please check with your opponent before we use these rules, sort of suggesting and implying um, that, you know, the Forge World rules for every reason aren't quite official, or as official as the GW rules. Whereas now, they're going to be rewritten, or allegedly they're going to be rewritten to say, before you use these Forge World rules, make sure you check with your opponent that they know what the rules are. So basically, the burden has gone from check the opponent if it's alright to use them, so it will be okay, just make sure they know what they are so they don't get a nasty surprise in the middle of your game when you suddenly say, ah no, this big death killer missile is toughness 10 with 2d6 wounds. I'm just making that up, I don't know anything that is toughness 10 with 2d6 wounds, but you get my idea. Basically, don't surprise your player, but otherwise it's fair game. Now, hmm... This hasn't happened for a while. I think my tab's a bit too skinny. For my base, let's see if we can get that stuck in a bit better. Now, you might notice uh, on this hand, I've got lovely long girly fingernails, and you might be thinking, what is up with the Greenside Project? Is he perhaps some sort of a transvestite? Does he like to dress up as a woman when he's not filming and go and uh, do cabaret? Uh, no, good question, but no, that's that's not really me. I have long ha uh, fingernails on this hand because I uh, play a lot of acoustic guitar and you need longer nails to help with the older plucking. People who've just seen my Spooky Tober video will have already heard well, actually some some of what was some very rough guitar playing to uh, celebrate Spooky Tober being over. But that's why I have long nails like a girl. Now, it's calmed down a bit in recent years when I was a particularly... Uh, avid and serious guitar player trying to make money out of it. I actually used to go and get a uh, nail strengthener and basically varnish my nails with that to keep them nice and strong and stop them from snapping. But you know, now I'm a grown up with a more boring job. I think it'd be a bit bizarre to be walking around my workplace and have members of the public seeing that I had lovely, lovely hardened and glossy nails. So I don't do that. Hmm. Now, this just isn't happening, guys, is it, with this base? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on one side, and then later I'm going to come back to that mini with some green stuff, pop some green stuff in the slot first, and get it sorted that way. Let's get mini number two. Yeah, so, uh, going back to the Forge World thing, why do I think Forge World have done that? Or why do I think Games Workshop have let them do it? Well, I think it sort of goes back to the changes in how GW views Forge World since the Horus Heresy minis and rules were released. Because I'm pretty sure that before the Horus Heresy rules and minis were released, Games Workshop's general attitude to Forge World was one of sort of indifference. I mean, they liked it there, it was something that it was something that they would be doing for, you know, your more experienced or your more mature hobbyists or some of them who wanted or didn't mind spending a little bit more for a slightly different sort of product. But then when the Horus Heresy, oh we've got a bit of a tag there to come off, when the Horus Heresy book started to come out, the sales were so great that GW started to realise they could make serious profit off them. And at that point, they have started looking analytically at, hmm, now, if we want more people to use Forge World, how can we encourage that? Ah, I know. We'll rephrase the rules so it appears like a more official product. 
which is obviously totally in their rights to do. I suspect that's why they've done it, which may be the teeniest bit cynical of me, but I know from previous uh, videos and things I've either seen or done myself, there's no doubt, there's no lack of cynicism about Games Workshop, so that's probably one of the less cynical things anyone's guessed about them. Now, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's it. It, it could simply be that the Forge or developers have been pressing for it a while because um, they didn't like to think of their product they're releasing as being in some way sort of second rate or unofficial. Which could be, and I imagine it's frustrating if you're Forge World, you spend hours on rules and then you get people going, I'm not allowed to play with your models, or with the rules. During game sessions at my game club, I've even heard of some GW stores not allowing Forge World products to be used with Forge World rules. Which I think is totally mad. Just trying to bend this gun a bit more straight. Bend it up a bit. Oh well, you know. It could be worse if it was Forge if it was a... Uh, Fine cast would we'll probably be pointing back at him like some sort of lab of banana, wouldn't it? Bit of a mould line there, I think. And he's scraping off. Um, traditionally, I'm a great one for signing off on minis, not having any mould lines left, and then uh, undercoating them and then seeing big gaping mould lines, because as soon as you get paint on a mini, it changes the way it looks, and you can see things in more detail, and you can see the big mistakes you've missed, but I think that's okay for this guy. I'll give one more crack at trying to get stick in this base or just break out the green stuff straight away and get them all green stuffed in. Let's see, oh, I've got a bit of a tag on here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, now these are sort of the last. I won't exactly call painting these guys a slog because that would be very nice in their listing and I don't want to hurt their self esteem. But um, with any army, you get things that you enjoy more or less. And, I'm just one of those painters, I don't really like painting a model more than once, which probably means I'm not really cut out for painting armies, but in general I can get away with it. The only real troops I'm painting twice are painting these two infantry squads. There's going to be more infantry in the army, but because that's either going to be my Mordians as veterans, or another idea I've got for some penal legion troops. These are the only other Talon infantry that I'll be painting that aren't part of the HQ or something. So I want to get it done. I want to get them done. I want them to get them looking good. And then I can focus on slightly more esoteric or peculiar or unusual or exciting uh, models that I plan to add to the army. I'm thinking things like rattlings, uh, those forge world snipers that I've got. And I've had a kicking around in a box for the past while. All sorts of things. Maybe some more tanks, although I've not really quite finished my Lumin Rosses yet. The second Sentinel. All well, that sort of thing. Now, is that going to work? Here's a top tip. Actually, no, I can't show you this top tip, which is annoying, but if you've got a uh, one of the pinning clamps that GW sell, the black ones, where you can uh, clamp in a mini to uh, put a pin vise in and drill through and pin it. You can always use one of those to hold your mini up like that when you're gluing the base on. And that way you can go, you can do another mini whilst it's drying. Unfortunately, I'm using the clamp at the moment to, uh, well, basically, to put my phone in to film this. So I was, I was just thinking, now where is that clamp so I can show you how to work it, but it's being used. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to live without that, but I think he's, no, nope, he's not. Oh, it's been a while since I've done this many metal minis all at once, and normally I've been doing cork bases like Inquisitory, and so... Hmm... You know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to go, I'm going to break out some green stuff, I'm going to start greening stuff in them, and then I'll uh, see you in a minute with some green stuff action done. Ta-da! And through the magic of video editing, in two seconds for you, but about ten minutes for me, I've mixed up a batch of green stuff and started to use it to pad out and seal these bases. Um, the reason I didn't want to do that on camera is because a, while, a long while ago I brought these from Gale Force 9. Originally the tubes were the same size as each other because I thought I'd get all the green stuff I could get in one big lot and then I'd be sort for life for green stuff, which is kind of true. There's certainly a lot more than I got or would be able to get in the GW deal for green stuff or any of the other ones that, for instance, Army Painter did. But because of these containers, it's good to keep your blue and your yellow apart because it stops them from starting to cure just in the pack. But they both tend to get terribly stuck in these tubes. And I knew when filming the last bit of this video 
that to get out enough green stuff to base these guys, maybe have a little bit over to play with and to do some uh, sculpting with, it was going to take a lot of cutting and reshaping the boxes and pulling out and swearing and that sort of thing. And, you know, I wanted to escape this video with some dignity, so I did that off camera. What I do have, though, now is I've got these two guys in their bases and also in an upturned lid, I've got bathing some water, a nice lot of green stuff there that I can use to base my other minis. I found myself, if I had a nice pool of water to keep my green stuff in, it stopped it sticking to my fingers and kept it nice and dry and malleable for longer and stopped it from curing. So let's do some more. I'm going to grab some tea for a second. So uh, get some lovely music in your head whilst I'm drinking so you don't hear the slurp. Ah, that's lovely tea. Now, let's pick another talon to do. So, as you probably noticed, this video is a fair bit longer than my previous videos. Um, just something I'm experimenting with to see if I like doing it this way and to see if um, other people enjoy it. There will be some cuts because I've got probably about 15 minutes worth of space on my phone to record. And then I'm going to go and, when that's done, jump, send it downstairs and send it in blocks. Smaller, more manageable blocks to YouTube and then edit it together using the YouTube video editor. Um, but I know personally, when I'm looking for videos, particularly because I like a video going on whilst I'm painting, I find it quite hypnotic. Um, I find longer videos are better because it means I get to spend more time working on my minis and less time finding the next video to watch. And I wonder if people are the same. I wonder if people would appreciate a longer video. Of course, there's equally the chance that some people go like, that is too much green side project. Three minutes a day is all we can handle. And that's fair enough. I can, I can understand that. That is not a problem, folks. But if you do want a longer video, this is your chance. Now, I know, <laughs> having said that I don't like using a knife on white metal, this is a bit of an exception when you've got things like tags that you want to come off. There we go. Bit of a file. In my town tomorrow, we've got a sort of games and mini convention, which is exciting, like a very, very mini games day uh, that a friend of mine... And a relative of my girlfriend's is running, which is exciting. And although there aren't any um, GW products there, because it's not sort of a GW thing, is it doing an independent game show in a small parochial English town? There will be other minis. There will be Mantic minis. And I think there might be some Privateer Press minis. I don't know that for sure, but I know there's definitely Mantic Minis, which is cool. I've seen some briefly. I've seen some skeletons, which I thought were quite cool. I like the idea of a lot of their Kings of War range. I think that looks quite sweet. Um, I've been watching the Beasts of War video about them. And they do have some nice minis. I can definitely see the appeal. There is one thing about them I'm not so sure of. Um, and it's one of those things that I think, or I'm hoping, is sort of an accidental thing that no one's thought too much about because of the sort of people that like minis but is something that maybe Mantic should think about in the future. So, humanoid races, or certainly the humanoid race that I've seen that's been in the Beasts of War video, sort of, you know, is your paladins, which is cool. Paladins are cool. Your sort of religious uh, human army. They're cool. They look very nice. They've nice, got nice blue armour. Uh, they look maybe a bit like a cross between... They're wearing, like, ancient Greek armour and a bit... A Bretonian flair about them. No, they're cool minis. And um, as far as I could see, all the minis I could see were painted as white Caucasians. Which, you know, fair enough. A lot of people in minis, in the minis community, are white. It's not a particularly uh, multicultural hobby at the moment, which is a shame, but I can understand how that happens. Um, I think probably long term, you know. Why not? Why not paint a few people from of different ethnicities in your army? But that's a, a personal thing. So anyway, they've got this predominantly white uh, humanoid army, but then all the ogres have been painted. What I think was supposed to be quite a dark purple, but from all the videos, came up as looking very sort of brown skinned, 
And the ogres in Mantic are basically these sort of very muscular, A-shaped, um, barbaric creatures. Now, I don't believe that the people that make Mantic products are racist. Well, I really hope they're not. I've not seen any evidence other than this that they are. But I wonder if they should think about what sort of the message they're sending with that. So you've got your civilised humans, who are all white, and then you've got your sort of strong but not particularly bright army, who you've all decided to paint with brown skin. Think about it for a minute, Mantic. And, like I say, it's not that I think they're racist, but just because sometimes we don't mean something to be racist, that doesn't mean that's not the impression it gets. Okay, let's imagine you were, you know, maybe a young black dude, 13 or 14. You're into your video games, you may be into Magic the Gathering. You go to a game shop. You look at the minis they've got painted, because all the game shops obviously have a range of painted minis to show off. And you notice that all the heroes are white. And the sort of savage tribe are all black. Isn't that going to want you to make you get into the hobby? Well, I mean, some people won't notice it. Some white people won't notice it. Some black people won't notice it. Some will. And if that puts some people off the hobby, that's not what we want, is it, guys? So just something I've been thinking about. I didn't really intend on saying it here. I've mostly talked to my girlfriend about it at great length. But I do think it's something worth us thinking. You know, are we actively making our hobby a nice, accessible place for people of different genders and different ethnicities? Now, I mean, I have to say, I mean, you can't get, in my view, a more predominantly friendly community online than the minis community. Certainly in terms of the people that post videos up. I don't know a single person who's ever said anything in terms of videos I've watched, that I've thought was nasty or prejudiced or anything, and that's pretty unique if you compare it, to, for instance, to like the video games community. There are some people who make content who are pretty bigoted or can be pretty bigoted, and goodness knows there's some people in the comments who are the same. And I always think it's one of the lovely things about our miniatures hobby and our miniatures community, one of the reasons that I post is because it's not like that. It's a lot more inclusive, it's a lot more in general, or at least the areas that I frequent are a lot more open minded. No, you still get your you still get your buffoons either in the comments, although, you know, the few comments I get on my videos are all from very nice civilized people. So thank you, nice civilized people. But you do get your buffoons on sites like Fayette and Bell of Lost Souls and things, and you're always gonna get that to a certain extent. But we are a great community. There are more and more uh women uh posting in things, which I think is fantastic. Um, but yeah, let's just keep an eye out for things that could stop other people enjoying the hobby because that's what it's about. This is a hobby that should be enjoyed. It's a great hobby. It's great for young people because it teaches focus and promotes a skill set that doesn't just involve sitting down and watching something and then pressing buttons. I love video games. And video games can help young people learn and young people develop. But... That doesn't mean that's all they should do. I think ours is a great hobby. It's great because it gets people to talk and use their imaginations. It gets people to read. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the Black Library for various reasons, but I do think the amount of young people that I seen who wouldn't normally read who end up reading quite, quite complex texts by their standards because their Black Library text is absolutely excellent, and I think that can only be encouraged. As you can see here, I'm just drilling in... Uh, Bit of this plasma rifle that's quite cool it doesn't need to go all the way in um this of course the famous mini that came as a set for 25 pounds but is available for you to buy on ebay from certain sellers for 19.99 don't do it so got him we're going to get a base and you've already seen me doing this i was doing this whilst i was rambling on so we didn't say too much about it but i'm going to get me some green stuff Green stuff, by the way, like all the best things we use in this hobby, is mildly toxic, so please wash your hands before eating. I hate to think of anyone poisoning themselves. I'm going to sausage it up a bit now. There was a time I did this as neatly as humanely possible, although obviously not on camera. But you know what? Once you've got some sand on the base, guys, or whatever, it really doesn't matter. You can't see it. Back you go in there. And, you know, we want to use our time 
not for getting green stuff neat, we want to be using it for painting, for gaming, for looking at minis, and for talking about, you know, racial equality in our hobby, obviously. I say that glibly, but it is an important thing. There we go. Nice, and then I'll just uh, scrape away with that, using one of my lovely green stuff tools now. <laughs> About a year ago, I went shopping with my gran. Now, I love my gran, but even so, it's not shopping with your gran is not exactly something that you look forward to, is it? We went to a garden centre too, and I'm not a sort of gardeny kind of guy. Um, but this garden centre, it turns out, garden centres have become quite cool since last time I was there, because as well as selling gardening things, this one sold art stuff. And amongst the art stuff it sold, it sold things like this, which is a tool for uh, sculpting things. This is magnetic and removable, and I've got a selection of other tools I can use. This is rubber, which is great because with a bit of water on it's really good at moulding the green stuff but not sticking to it. They also sold different um, acrylic paints and uh, oil paints and mediums and retarders for both sets of paint. And they sold Winsor Newton brushes, which is one of the first only places in town, in fact the only place in my town, that does sell Winsor Newton brushes, which is excellent. So guys, get the message there. I guess the message there is, uh, yeah, go to garden centres for many things. How many do we have? One, two, three, four. Let's do our... At least get number five in for this bit of the video. Doom, 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 doom. And let's go for mm, this chappy here now. It's good to talk about this chap because I was thinking before. Now, I'm not going to do a standard for the Motalan Army, I don't think, because it doesn't really fit my vision of them being a very. Uh, let's adjust this camera slightly. I've got a vision of these being very stealth orientated as a force, as Talon normally are, prioritising mobility. And although a very proud regiment, I find it hard to imagine the Talon, at least the Talon in my force, uh, wanting to carry a bloody great banner with a lovely bit of free hand on it to distract people with, you know. I'm sure if you asked your Talon, they'd say, yep, banners and regimental pride are really important, but let's... Let's not let it give away our location today, folks. So, but if I was going to do a banner, this is the guy I'd have done it with. I'd have converted because I think this hand would be right for swapping, sawing it off, changing it for one, and putting your standard up there. And there's still a chance that, you know, if in uh, about six months or so, when I've finished all the things I've got planned to do for this army, which will take it to a between 1.5 and a 2,000 point force, um, you know, I'm like, you know what? I do want to do a standard, I want to do some lovely freehand. Um, then, you know, that will happen and that will become a reality. God, I've not mentioned it much, but the lack of mould lines on these models in particular are lovely. Which means, as I understand it, they must be using a new mould for them. Which means they must still be planning on producing them at least for a while. I've talked in previous videos about the plan to do away with all uh, fine casts by 2016. I wonder with these models, are they going to make them totally obsolete, or are they just going to always continue a small range of metal models? Mm -hmm. It's an interesting question. Oh, interesting for me. Maybe I apologise if you're bored rigid, but you know, you're probably about 30 minutes into this video now, so ha ha ha. You're clearly too tired or bored or lazy or bizarrely enthralled by looking at my fingers and hearing my voice to change the channel. So more fool you. Right, let's get this guy into his base. Get that tag away. And after this, because I've got the green stuff done, there's a little bit of green stuff that I've needed for a figure I began converting a while back. I might be able to finish that off, which would be very cool. Do, 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 do. Squeeze you into a sausage, pop you in there. Now, I always use a bit of water on my hands when I'm using green stuff, because otherwise it sticks to my fingers more than it sticks to the mini. And I find that very frustrating. Until I found out you could use water, or, you know, if you're a more liberally minded sort of person, Vaseline works quite well. Uh... Yeah, until I found out that I hated working with green stuff. I'm still not a mega fan of it. I can never get it as precise as I want. I think I'm not patient enough to let some of it cure before putting layers on top for detailing and things like that. I think that will come with time. There you go. That's a start. That can pop in there. And this duty can come in here. Lovely. And then scrape that away with one of my uh, less impressive fingernails on this hand. 
because of course this hand does the fretting on the guitar so you don't want nearly as much nail. So here's our five tile to begin with. After the jump we're going to have uh, the sergeant, the missile launcher and the heavy weapons and the rest of the heavy weapons team sorted so see you in a bit guys. Okay so post jump I watched the video back to check I didn't say anything particularly moronic and whilst I was doing that you can see I've done a few more troops which leaves me with the uh, heavy weapon and the sergeant. Let's do the sergeant next. Mm, so watching that last bit of the video back I do worry that I've been a little bit sort of preachy. If you found me preachy or patronising then I apologise. Let's talk about something what shall we talk about instead? Hmm. Then there was an eerie silence. I know, talking about eerie things. Yeah, it wasn't Spooky Toba Fab. Really enjoyed watching everyone's videos and seeing all the different styles of doing something in sort of a spooky way. Yep, that was awesome. I love it when we have the months. I wonder if we should do some sort of uh, Christmas styled challenge of doing different uh, races and different Xenos versions of Father Christmas. I'd be up for that, maybe doing a Father Christmas uh, Imperial Guard or Chaos Space Marine. Nurgle would be disgusting but quite easy because they've all got those sort of bloated uh, Father Christmas bellies. Of course, Nurgle belly is often bloated with disease and rotten pestilence as opposed to Father Christmas's belly, which is bloated with mince pies and comparatively little pestilence as far as I'm aware but that would be quite cool so have a think of that if you've got a burning desire to uh, use one of your minis as a one time gimmick trick uh, to make them look like Father Christmas let me know I'll come and join you it will be cool it will be a thing having said that I would get quite busy around Christmas don't know about you guys so it would have to start pretty early, right at the beginning of December. It would be the Advent Challenge, wouldn't it? Because it would be the 25 days before to convert a Father Christmas or related special Christmas mini. Maybe I could pin the top of the head and then use it as a lovely Christmas decoration. It'd have to be resin or plastic, otherwise it would weigh the tree down. But it's definitely doable. Definitely doable. Just trying to get this last bit of flick from the end of the sword. And that's going to be done. Um, then that's going to be done. I have found that by talking whilst doing this video, I'm about anywhere between 10 and 20 percent worse at everything. So if you want to know what it's like normally for me to work on things, imagine what I'm doing here, but just better in every way. Or you know, you might have seen some of my finished minis before and thought, well, actually, not that much better there. Greenside project. Mm -hmm. He's looking pretty cool, isn't he? Quite a cool guy. You know what I need to do, guys? I need to knock the camera over. But also, at some point, before I paint and undercoat these guys, I need to give them backpacks for our Voxcasters. Because one of these guys is going to be this squad's Voxcaster, and another one's going to get swapped with my other uh, Imperial Guard squad, so they can be a Voxcaster for that squad too, so I need to get that done. Well remembered, don't let me forget. Come here, base. Goodness me, I'm cack handed. And back to work on Monday, which is going to be sad. You know, if you've enjoyed watching more than one video for me a week and me sounding a bit chirpier than normal, well, make the most of it, because come Monday, you're going to be working, you're going to be miserable, you're going to be painting, you know, half a mini's hair every week, and that's it. It's going to be sad time until about Christmas time then. But Christmas time's good. And then in the new year, First half of the year, up to summer, things are always a teeny bit easier for me. It's always this time of year that gets maddeningly busy. And in you go. There you go, Sergeant. Those of you who predominantly make plastic minis, firstly, I'm quite jealous of you. I have for you finding minis that you like that are plastic. I'd much rather work with a plastic than metal. I do find it a lot easier to work with. So damn you. But also, you probably don't know the horror of having to really make sure your bases are 
firmly covered and not having big gaping holes. It's obviously been a while since I've done it properly because I'd forgotten that and thought that Haha, just simple super glue would help me stick to many. Now, talking of super glue, here's my missile launcher's body. Here's his arm. There's the pin I put in whilst I was re watching that previous video or the previous bit of the video. Now let's uh, trim the pin down. Then we'll try sticking it in, and that'll be the moment of truth. Did I get the measurements right, or did I really faff it up? Well, for those of you that could hear that, you'll be happy to know that the pin flew up in the air, actually hit my ceiling, and then fell down next to some of my girlfriend's elves, safe and sound. So let's see if we can get it lined up and in. Lovely. Oh, that is good. Oh, can I do a... Southern State American thing. That's going to be tighter than a weasel on crack day. I have no idea what that means. I apologise if you're either offended by that or just confused. Okay, let's try a better pseudo Southern State American thing. Tighter than a weasel down a hole. That's tighter than a weasel down a hole. Please don't hate me for that. All right. Am I going to line up? One thing you have to be careful with is making sure that the guy's other hand is lined up with the slot on the missile launcher I found before. And hopefully that very blurry bit of footage has helped you see that. Let's see if we can get it there like that. That's what we need. I always pin my metal minis because there's nothing more frustrating in life than a metal mini that keeps falling apart. Nothing. Nothing. If you think you've suffered in your life, you should try having a metal mini, perhaps from the old corner... Uh, Demons of Corn that were like £25 and about £25 weight as well and made a metal in his arm kept falling out oh, tough days guys, tough days you fan cast people don't know how lucky you are with just your bubbles your bubbles, your horrible deforming bubbles ah, nearly there with the squad now guys then we've only got one more thing to do I think we'll pin on the Voxcaster backpacks Slightly later date when I remembered where I put them. I don't know if I showed people. I ordered some basically from a bits store a while back to make sure that I had enough. In you go. There you go. Lovely. And here he is. Let's just smear over that. Mm, 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 mm. And there, folks, is my uh, second Talon Infantry Squad. Let's see if we can get it in focus despite my shaky cam. There they are. So the next step will be the uh, Voxcast packs. And I'm going to scratch my neck and think what the next word I'm supposed to say is. Oh, and uh, putting sand on the base. But obviously the green stuff will have to... Uh, the green stuff will have to dry before that. Now, one last thing I'm going to do on this video before letting you go... Here's a bit of a commis commissar. And here's the other bit. Now, originally this commissar model was holding one of these. Um, hand flamer. But after some terrible health and safety issues, the Imperium banned all hand flamers. Uh, so I replaced it with this from a Grey Knights. From, I think from a Grey Knights. I played to this. I replaced it with this plasma pistol from somewhere that looked quite cool. And as you can say, see, see, or look something along the lines of like that, which would be cool. But I'm taking a bit. Too, had to take a bit too much plasma gun away, so I'm just going to get a teeny bit of green stuff. And this is the point where I think I'm going to improve it before I make it look a lot worse. But I'm trying to make it look better. Just a little sausage down to make the gun look a bit thicker. Wow, this video is nearly going to be 40 minutes with all the bits together, you lucky guys. I wonder what you'll have achieved in the 40 minutes whilst you've been watching this. Will you have assembled a model? Will you have fallen asleep on your couch? Will you have just decided to unsubscribe to me as quickly as possible and never think of me again? 
It does look a bit better proportioned, just need some detail work on it. So, what we're going to do, we're gonna... for now I'm just going to get worry about getting it into a good shape, and then I'm going to let it cure, and then I'm going to add detail to it later. Looks a bit more substantial now, though, doesn't it? Which is good. And the bits that have gone over the plastic, slightly uglier bits, they can get filed away when it's dry. And no one will ever know. Let's check how that looks. Oh, lovely. Those of you that are curious, one last thing I'll show you, this is what our common cell phone is going to be stood on, with a bit of sand, a lovely rock, so. There he is, and he's going to be with Al-Harim and his mates, probably in such a way that all he ever does is kill, is execute Al-Harim when he fails a leadership test. But anyway, you know, some of you have some news. I hope you've enjoyed this Let's Assemble. Um, not sure what's coming next, maybe it'll be a Let's Base, maybe it'll be a Let's Apologise for a Boring Video, video. who knows? Anyway, hope you're all okay, love you loads, and I'll see you soon. Toodle pip.